Notice the similarities in the structure of glucose and glycogen. Glycogen is composed of multiple glucose molecules connected by alpha-1,6 and alpha-1,4 glycosidic linkages. Glycogen is a storage form of glucose and is able to provide an additional source of glucose outside of gluconeogenesis. The structure of glycogen consists of reducing and non-reducing ends that will be acted upon by enzymes and later discussed throughout this video. This structure also contains alpha-1,4 and alpha-1,6 linkages. The enzyme responsible for the alpha-1,4 linkages is glycogen synthase. Alpha-1,4 linkages produce straight chains as opposed to branching and are the locations at which glycogen is reduced throughout this pathway. An enzyme known as the branching enzyme acts upon the alpha-1,6 linkages to aid in branching within the glycogen chain. This branching occurs approximately every 10 residues but is required to be at least 4 residues apart from the neighboring branch. Now that we have given a brief overview of the structure of glycogen, we will be discussing the synthesis of glycogen and how glucose is added to a glycogen chain. In order for glucose to be added to the glycogen chain, we first have to convert glucose 1-phosphate to glucose. The bond between the glucose molecule and the phosphate group is unreactive. Glucose 1-phosphate, in association with uridine triphosphate, uses the enzyme UDP glucose pyrophosphorylase to drive the reaction. This reaction produces UDP glucose and pyrophosphate. UDP glucose is more reactive than glucose 1-phosphate due to the overall negative charge. The inorganic pyrophosphate reacts with water to produce two orthophosphates. This is crucial in driving the overall reaction towards the products. We are now able to use the UDP glucose form to add glucose to the glycogen chain. We add glucose to the glycogen chain using an enzyme known as glycogen synthase. Glycogen synthase synthesizes an alpha-1,4 glycosidic bond here, which attaches the glucose to the glycogen chain. Glycogen synthase cannot act by itself. It needs the help of a primer that is four more glucose molecules long. This glycogen primer is a short chain of glucose residues that are linked by alpha-1,4 glycosidic bonds and is created by an enzyme known as glycogenin. Glycogenin is a dimer that creates the glycogen primer by using the UDP glucose that was just formed. After the primer is formed by glycogen synthase, it can finally start the synthesis of the glycogen chain. It is important to remember that glycogen synthase can only catalyze alpha-1,4 glycosidic linkages. The alpha-1,6 glycosidic linkages are created by the branching enzyme. Branching of the glycogen chain is essential because it increases the rate of glycogen synthesis and breakdown by increasing the amount of terminal glucose residues. On a straight glycogen chain, there are only two terminal ends for the addition of glycogen. If branching occurs off the main glycogen chain, it adds multiple sites for glycogen synthesis compared to the two. The branching enzyme breaks alpha-1,4 glycosidic bonds, which detaches about seven or more glucose molecules. These detached residues must include a terminal non-reducing end. The residues will then be reattached to a different location on the glycogen chain via alpha-1,6 glycosidic bonds, creating a new branch. There are a couple of requirements for the branching enzyme. The first being that the original glycogen chain is at least 11 residues in length before it can break the alpha-1,4 linkage. The second is that the group broken off must be placed at least 4 residues away from any neighboring branches. Glycogen synthase is regulated by two different protein kinases. Protein kinase A, pKa, and glycogen synthase kinase, GSK. Protein kinase A is activated by an increase in cyclic AMP. Glycogen synthase can be found in two forms, glycogen synthase A and glycogen synthase B. Glycogen synthase A is the fully active form, meaning the glycogen chains are growing. Glycogen synthase B is the inactive phosphorylated form, meaning that the glycogen synthesis is stopped. Glycogen synthase A can be transformed into glycogen synthase B when phosphorylated by pKa or GSK along with ATP. Thus far we have discussed how to synthesize glycogen and add glucose to a glycogen chain in the form of a storage molecule. We will now be discussing how glucose is removed from the glycogen chain and broken down to be used within our bodies. The first step in glycogen breakdown utilizes an enzyme known as glycogen phosphorylase. This glycogen phosphorylase cleaves an alpha-1,4 glycosidic bond of a terminal glucose molecule that has a free hydroxyl group located on the fourth carbon. The cleavage of this bond is done in association with an inorganic phosphate. The reason an inorganic phosphate is used rather than ATP is to spare energy. This reaction will not occur unless an important cofactor is present. 
This cofactor is pyridoxal phosphate, which acts as an acid-base catalyst. Once the reaction has taken place, we are left with two products, a glucose 1-phosphate and a glycogen chain with one less glucose residue. Glycogen phosphorylase can only cleave alpha-1,4 glycosidic bonds, and it will only cleave these bonds if they are at least four residues away from the nearest alpha-1,6 glycosidic bond. This is extremely important because it causes glycogen phosphorylase to be the rate-limiting step of glycogen breakdown. Since glycogen phosphorylase has to be four residues away from the nearest alpha-1,6 glycosidic bond in order to cleave a glucose molecule, it is important for glycogen chain to undergo remodeling so glycogen breakdown can continue. There are two enzymes that are used for remodeling, transferase and alpha-1,6 glucosidase. Once a branch that is linked to the glycogen chain by alpha-1,6 glycosidic bonds is down to four residues, the transferase enzyme has to restructure the chain in order for glycogen synthase to continue working. Transferase is responsible for shifting three of the remaining glucose residues away from the alpha-1,6 glycosidic bond to an end of the glycogen chain. This leaves a lone glucose residue attached to the chain by an alpha-1,6 glycosidic bond. Now that we have a single glucose molecule attached by an alpha-1,6 glycosidic bond, we can use alpha-1,6 glycosidase to cleave this glucose molecule, giving us one more free glucose. Once the glucose molecule is cleaved, we are left with a linear polymer of the glycogen chain that is composed of only alpha-1,4 glycosidic bonds, so now the glycogen phosphorylase can finish breaking apart the glycogen chain. The last step in glycogen breakdown is converting the glucose 1-phosphates that were just cleaved into glucose 6-phosphates. This is done by using an enzyme known as phosphoglucomutase. A mutase enzyme is used simply to move a group from one position on a molecule to another. In the case of this enzyme, we are transferring the phosphoryl group from carbon 1 to carbon 6. The phosphoglucomutase active site has a modified serine residue that has the catalytic abilities to catalyze this reaction. The modified serine residue has a phosphoryl group attached to it that reacts with the 6 position on the glucose molecule, resulting in the transfer of the phosphoryl group, which creates the important cofactor glucose 1,6 bisphosphate. The phosphoryl group attached to the first position on a glucose 1,6 bisphosphate reacts with the phosphoglucomutase and is transferred to the active serine site within the enzyme. We now have glucose 6-phosphate. Glycogen breakdown is regulated in both the muscle and the liver. We are going to start with the regulation within the muscle. Glycogen breakdown is controlled by the allosteric regulation of glycogen phosphorylase, which exists in two major forms, phosphorylase A and phosphorylase B. Phosphorylase A is the active state, while phosphorylase B is the inactive or less active state. When a cell contains low levels of ATP compared to AMP, AMP will activate phosphorylase B to convert it to phosphorylase A which allows more glucose molecules to be released for glycolysis, so more ATP will be created. While doing intense activity, hormones such as epinephrine will be released, which activates phosphorylase kinase, which converts phosphorylase B to phosphorylase A. When there is plenty of ATP and glucose 6-phosphate present, they act as allosteric inhibitors of AMP and convert phosphorylase A back to phosphorylase B, stopping glycogen breakdown. We will now talk about glycogen breakdown regulation in the liver. The liver similarly contains phosphorylase A and phosphorylase B, but differs in activators and inactivators when compared to the muscle. In the liver, phosphorylase A is affected by glucose and phosphorylase B is not. Phosphorylase B, similar to the muscle, is also insensitive to AMP molecules. This is due to the regulated energy levels in the liver. When glucose levels are too high, glucose will become an inhibitor to phosphorylase A by binding to it and making it inactive so glycogen will not be broken down. When glucose levels are too low, glucose leaves phosphorylase A, resulting in activation and beginning the glycogen chain breakdown. Diseases unique to this pathway are glycogen storage diseases. Pompe's disease is caused by a deficiency in the alpha-1,4 glucosidase, which can lead to cardiorespiratory failure. Anderson's disease is primarily found in the liver and is due to a deficiency in the branching enzyme. This possibly results in liver failure and an autoimmune reaction to glycogen. Von Gierke's disease is caused by an absence of glucose 6-phosphatase in the liver, causing glucose to be present in large amounts, which can result in organ changes, damaging of tissues, and the inability to maintain normal blood glucose levels.
Now we will be discussing the role glycogen metabolism plays in homeostasis. Glucose homeostasis is a term that refers to maintaining an overall regular balance of blood glucose levels within the body. When an excess amount of glucose resides in the blood, glycogen serves as a glucose storage molecule to rid the blood of free glucose. Insulin's response to glucagon keeps blood glucose levels regulated. A unique enzyme to glycogen metabolism is glycogen synthase. Glycogen synthase must be associated with glycogenin in order to be effective. Glycogenin limits the number and size of glycogen molecules and is responsible for attaching glucose molecules to tyrosine. The interaction between glycogenin and glycogen synthase is what allows for more glucose molecules to attach. Glycogenin and glycogen synthase continue to work together until the chain is approximately 10 residues in length to then be catalyzed by the branching enzyme.